In the last video, we talked about the different filtering steps that we apply before ion identity networking. And so we talked about the peak filter, which is sorting out uh, bad feature shapes. So we set a minimum number of data points here. Then we have the duplicate peak filter, which uh, tries to find duplicate peak list rows in a feature list. And then we have the peak list rows filter, which is very important as we um, limit the feature list rows to um, at, at least an isotope pattern of two peaks. So we need an isotope pattern here. And then we also said that we um, want to have at least one. So we don't want to have empty rows after the peak filter, for example, we could end up with empty rows. So we want to have one, or we want to have at least two or three features in a row. And with this, uh, we come to meta correlate. And meta correlate, um, we have plenty of grouping options here. So the purpose is that we want to group different features or different feature list rows that originate from the same molecule. So we have chromatography based uh, mass spectrometry, and we want to um, group all the different ions that were generated for the same molecule. And so first of all, we have the retention time tolerance. And depending on the quality of our data, we can go very high here. So we don't have to be re too restrictive with the retention time tolerance. But if the data uh, quality is very low, we have to go lower with the retention time tolerance. And the quality is basically um, the noise in the features and also the uh, number of data points on a feature. So if you acquire many MS2 scans and the MS1 scan rate is very low and uh, the feature shapes are very narrow because you do um, fast chromatography, then um, you definitely need to go lower with the retention time tolerance because the um, correlation grouping is usually the uh, filter that is um, important to find um, features that originate from the same molecule. So if we have at least five data points, so we can go and set up and uh, set the minimum data points on a peak, we can set the minimum data points on both edges. So the rising and the falling edge of the peak, and then we can um, say we want to um, measure the Pearson correlation of the different data points of two peaks. And if the uh, feature shape correlation is at least 28, 82%, uh, um, this is correlated and we um, gonna group those features. But if we don't have five data points on a feature, we can't do this. So basically, you should uh, look into your raw data, or you just look in the feature list. And if the features have not enough data points, it doesn't make sense to apply correlation grouping. But you should definitely uh, rethink your MS MS1 scan right here. And then feature height correlation is not very restrictive. So uh, feature height correlation is just going to um, look at the different samples. So let's say we have 10 samples and our feature, so our iron was detected in all 10 samples. Then we just gonna apply Pearson correlation to the intensity and just compare, for example, the M plus H and the M plus sodium. And if the M plus sodium rises from the uh, like minimum sample to the maximum sample by tenfold, we expect the M plus H, so the protonated species or any other species, to also uh, rise in intensity. So the, the abundance should be somehow correlated over the uh, samples. So, um, and this should be true if the samples are not very different. So um, if everything is, for example, seawater, or if you um, have blood samples, then it should be somehow correlated. But this is not very restrictive. So only if we have negative correlations and so on, we're gonna lose uh, grouping. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, restrict grouping for two rows. And so if we can't apply a correlation grouping, um, we should definitely go lower with the retention time tolerance. And otherwise, if we can if we can apply correlation grouping, 
we can just go uh, higher with the retention time tolerance and then we just don't lose any uh, groups or any rows that should be grouped. And so this is the uh, correlation step. And then we have the ion identity networking step. And this is the basis uh, of ion identity networking. And then we're going to have multiple steps to refine the networks. So first of all, you need to group the rows because ion identity networking is only running on feature list groups, feature list row groups. And in this dialog, uh, you can set up the MZ tolerance. You can say if you want to check only one feature or all features in the row or the, only the average MZ of the feature list row. Um, this also uh, saves up some, some computation time, these two settings here. And then uh, you can set the ion identity library. So you can open this. And in this library, uh, you're just going to select all the different adducts, which are the main adducts. So ion identity networking, the first step is to um, define the main adducts. And later on, we can add some crazy adducts that we don't expect. But first of all, we should stick to the main adduct. So for example, um, the protonated, sodiated, ammonium adduct, then maybe doubly charged with um, two protons. And we have sometimes what we see um, is two sodium minus uh, proton, singly charged, and so on. So we, we only go for um, the um, like most probable ions here. And we select this one because it's a bile acid and in, in some of the bile acids we see this very often. And then we only select the modifications um, which are most probable. So we have um, minus water and minus two water and the rest is not selected here. And in the end what the module does, it just um, takes all the modifications and adds them to the, to the adducts. So we are going to end up with M plus H uh, minus water, M plus sodium minus water, and so on. And then we set up the maximum molecules per cluster. And we know that the bile acids tend to uh, cluster and some other molecules also tend to cluster. So then you have, for example, two cholic acid with one proton or one sodium. And so this is also very important to keep this kind of kind of low, maybe we go just uh, for two molecules in a cluster. And if you want to create any different insert fragments or adducts, uh, you can just go to add. And for example, we if we added uh, zinc, we can just go to press uh, zinc, and then doubly charged, so plus two. And this is going to create a new adduct down here with a uh, exact mass and the double charge. And if we want to combine something, we can go to combine and press on zinc. So double, double click, or just use this button here. And then we add, can, for example, remove one proton and go on add. And now we have M minus proton plus zinc uh, singly charged. And if we press on finish, we end up with the new molecules here. And the same holds true for the modifications. So we can just add some more modifications. We can combine modifications. For example, if we have multiple uh, water losses, we can just add uh, four water losses and so on. Okay, so we can uh, apply this. And one step that I forgot, um, the annotation refinement is a specific module. You can also add this specific module just uh, in the batch mode here. Um, but just for easy use, uh, you can also post run this module here. So this is going to run after the ion identity net networking. And then we can just um, delete small networks without major isot uh, without eight major adducts. And we can delete networks without monomers. So for example, if we only have uh, 2m and 3m plus h and so on. And so we can run this. And then we can run uh, multiple steps where we add uh, very strange adducts or just just more adducts to the networks. 
and the add ion identity to networks module is only running on existing networks. So this module, the first module creates the networks and this module just adds more identities to them. And so we can set up and um, just have the same screen here. We can go to a maximum molecules per cluster of 10 for uh, the bilaster standard. Uh, I saw things like eight molecules plus um, two protons doubly charged and stuff like this. So um, we can just add different adducts. We can set the maximum molecules. We can set uh, insult fragmentation. And for this module, I went for all the different adducts and only a small modification. And then I added a second step where I go for the uh, major uh, major adducts that show high fragmentation. And down here we can just add more water loss losses and ACN clusters and everything um, to just add uh, broader fragmenta in-source fragmentation to the networks. And then as a last step, we can apply ion identity network refinement. Um, and here I went for minimum size of the networks of three. So we uh, want to delete all the networks that only have a pair of two. So, um, and then we also delete all the smaller networks where we have uh, very large networks that explain um, the, the ions better. And in the end, we check all ion identities by MSMS. This is not very important, but it's uh, kind of helpful because um, especially the multimers are checked. So if we uh, find out that something could be a multimer, so for example, 2M plus sodium, then uh, it usually tends to fragment down to M plus sodium. So it loses one monomer and this is um, seen in the fragmentation. So we can run this on the aligned uh, peak list. And then in the end, we come up with a uh, filtered feature, feature list and with the uh, grouped feature list with the ion identity networks in it. And we can just go to um, MZ and network ID and just sort all the uh, networks here. And if you don't see this straight away, uh, you have to go to set table properties and then just select all of these. So we have to select the network ID and everything here. So just press on all and OK. And then you uh, can explore the networks and you can just scroll down and see some of the larger networks here. For example, here, this is one network. And in this network, um, the mass, the neutral mass is uh, 392 and they all have the same retention time or very similar retention time. We have the MZ ranging from 300 to uh, 1200. And then we have um, things like 6M plus two protons doubly charged. And in the end, they all add up to the same neutral molecule. And if we select all of those, we can right click and show MSMS. And in this screen, we can see all the MSMS scans of the different rows. Uh, and we can inspect, inspect the fragmentation behavior. And for some of those, um, you might, you might see that, for example, this, um, this was 6m plus uh, two protons, and it fragments down to 2m plus 2h. And so this was verified in MSMS. And we have different other for another adducts here. So in the next video, we're going to talk a bit more about uh, how to explore the networks and how to uh, send the ion identity networks to GMPS and then explore them back in um, back in MZ mine.